Hello. In this video, we will discuss the first of three trigonometric substitutions we can make when evaluating integrals. Well, let's consider when we use the trigonometric substitution of x equals a times the sine of theta. We use this substitution when we have an integral containing an odd power of the square root of a squared minus x squared. We'll use this integration technique, work with an example to demonstrate how to perform the substitution, and show the steps needed to complete the back substitution once we've integrated. Suppose we have the three following integrals. The integral of x squared over 9 minus x squared to the 5 halves power, dx. The integral of 2 minus t squared raised to the 3 halves power, dt. And the integral of s times the square root of x 16 minus s squared, ds. In each of these integrals, we see a power of the square root of a squared minus x squared, though we may use a variable other than x, and a is some constant. For example, in this second integral, 2 is our a squared. In this third integral, 16 is our a squared. In each of these cases, we can apply a trigonometric substitution of the form x equals a sine of theta. So where does this come from, or why do we use this particular substitution? So x equals a times the sine of theta means that the sine of theta is equal to x over a, or if we remember a right triangle, the sine of an angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So if we draw the reference triangle related to the sine of theta is equal to x over a, we get the following right triangle, where x is, which is in the numerator of x over a, x is the side opposite the angle theta, and a is on, along the hypotenuse. We can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the length of the third side, which we get to be the square root of a squared minus x squared. So returning to this form of the square root of a squared minus x squared, we're going to see that making that substitution of x equals a sine of theta means that we're going to square both the a and the sine of theta. And once we factor out a squared from both terms under the radical, we're going to have the square root of a squared times the quantity 1 minus sine squared of theta, where 1 minus the sine squared of theta, using the Pythagorean identity, gives us the cosine squared of theta. And when we take the square root, knowing that the square root will, re will result in a positive quantity, the square root of a squared minus x squared will give us the absolute value of a times the cosine of theta. So let's work through an example. We're going to look at that first case where we have the integral of x squared over 9 minus x squared to the 5 halves power dx. And before making a, a trig substitution in any case, we want to first check to see if a simpler uh, u substitution can be performed. So in this case, if we wanted to pursue u substitution, the best choice would probably be to let u equal 9 minus x squared. So if we consider a u substitution, the derivative of u with respect to x would be a negative 2x, and solving for dx, we would get negative du over 2x. So then making those substitutions in the integral of x squared over 9 minus x squared to the 5 halves power, we would get 9 minus u in the numerator. That's, that's what we get by simply taking uh, u equals 9 minus x squared and solving for x squared and replacing the x squared there. So we have 9 minus u over u to the 5 halves power, and then dx is equal to negative du over 2x. Now, since we have an x here in this denominator, if we solve for x in our u equals 9 minus x squared, we would get x equal to the square root of 9 minus u. Making that substitution, we get an integral of the form negative 1 half, the integral of 9 minus u over u to the 5 halves times the square root of 9 minus u du, which is really not a simpler looking integral. So therefore, let's proceed with trig substitution. So in this substitution, we're going to, we see that uh, 9 minus x squared takes the form of a squared minus x squared. So that means that the 9 is equal to the a squared, so that a is equal to 3. So therefore, we're going to use the substitution that x equals a sine of theta, or in this case, x equals 3 sine of theta. We always want to replace not just the x, but also the differential. So we want to take the derivative. So dx d theta is equal to 3 cosine of theta, or dx is equal to 3 cosine of theta d theta. And making the substitution, we get that the integral of x squared over 9 minus x squared to the 5 halves power becomes the integral of 3 sine of theta squared 
This is what happens when we, we replace each x with 3 sine of theta. The 3 cosine of theta, also in the numerator, comes from the dx. In the denominator, we have 9 minus the quantity 3 sine of theta squared, all raised to the 5 halves power. Now, the next steps really just involve some algebra. So we're going to try to simplify this into a nicer looking form. So in the numerator, we have 27 sine squared theta, cosine of theta. We see that in each term inside the quantity to the 5 halves power, we have a factor of 9. We can pull that out, but we also need to raise that 9 to the 5 halves power. 9 to the 5 halves power is actually 3 to the 5th power. So we're going to have 27, which is 3 cubed, over 3 to the 5th. So that will simplify to 1 9th, which we can pull out in front. The, the 1 minus sine squared theta we recognize from our Pythagorean identity. So we'll replace the 1 minus sine squared theta with cosine squared theta. And we get the, that our integral is 1 9th times the integral of sine squared theta over cosine theta all over cosine squared theta raised to the 5 halves power. And simplifying that denominator further, we get 1 9th times the integral of sine squared theta times cosine theta all over cosine to the fifth theta d theta. We can cancel a cosine theta both in the numerator and denominator. And we have 1 9th times the integral of sine squared theta over cosine to the fourth theta d theta. It might be helpful to rewrite that denominator cosine to the fourth theta as uh, a product of cosine squared and cosine squared. So let's consider what happens when we do that. Well, we get the integral 1 9th sine squared theta over cosine squared theta becomes tangent squared theta. 1 over cosine squared theta becomes secant squared theta. And we get the 1 9th e times the integral tangent squared theta times secant squared theta. Knowing that secant squared theta is the derivative of tangent of theta, we can pursue a u substitution. So let's suppose that u is equal to the tangent of theta. Then du is equal to secant squared theta d theta, which we have right here. So a u substitution would simply result in 1 9th times the integral of u squared du. We can easily integrate u squared to get 1 9th times u cubed over 3 plus c. We now perform the back substitution with the u. So we get that this is 1 27th tangent cubed theta plus c. So we started with the integral of x squared over 9 minus x squared to the 5 halves power dx. We now have it in the form to be 1 27th tangent cubed theta plus c. And now we have to complete the back substitution to undo uh, that x is equal to 3 sine of theta. And to do that, we're going to draw the reference triangle, remembering that sine of theta equals x over 3 is the opposite over hypotenuse. So we've placed the x opposite theta, the 3 on the hypotenuse. We use the Pythagorean theorem to find that that third side is the square root of 9 minus x squared. We're looking for, we need tangent cubed theta. So we need the tangent of theta, which we know is to be the opposite over the adjacent. So we need the opposite of x, which is x over the adjacent, which is the square root of 9 minus x squared. We get that the tangent of theta we get that the tangent of theta is equal to x over the square root of 9 minus x squared. So therefore, our integral to complete it is 1 over 27 times the quantity x over the square root of 9 minus x squared cubed plus c. Now, how do we know if our answer is correct? Well, we check it, of course. So we would check, is the derivative with respect to x of 1 27th times x over a square root of 9 minus x squared quantity cubed plus c, is it equal to x squared over 9 minus x squared to the 5 halves power? And I will leave that for you to check. But in general, that's a process you should use to check your answer. Now it's your turn. I want you to pause the video and evaluate the next two integrals. Make sure that you always check to see if something easier can be, be pursued first instead of the trigonometric substitution. For example, can you use u substitution with either of these integrals? Think strategically and try to eliminate as much um, unnecessary work as possible. All right, so let's summarize some of the big ideas. 
when considering the form of the integral and the known antiderivatives prior to pursuing a trig substitution, determine if a u substitution would simplify the integral. Next, recognize the forms associated with the trigonometric substitutions. In this video, we talked about the substitution when we see a, a form of the square root of a squared minus x squared, and we'll make the substitution of x equals a sine of theta. Make sure when you make the substitution for the variable, which is x in this case, you, you make the substitution for every x in the integral, and you make a substitution for the differential dx. When you do, the square root of a squared minus a sine of theta quantity squared equals the absolute value of a cosine of theta. Finally, always simplify the integrand and integrate the trigonometric integral. Perform the back substitution to convert the antiderivative to the original variable. Draw a reference triangle to help reverse the substitutions. And always have fun.